Hi, and welcome back to the 8-Bit Retro Refix. And on this week's episode, we're going to show you how to kamikaze hack the light on D4S drive in the Xbox 360 Slims. And this is called the kamikaze hack. No, not that one. The kamikaze! Or that one. <laughs> but it's actually for the Xbox 360. We're going to show you how to do it right after the intro. So just before we get started in um, just make sure um, that you check the links in the description. We've got a live stream on tomorrow night uh, with a spa of the YouTubers on there. There could be some other drop-ins as well from some surprise guests if they can make it on or not. But we'll see about that one. And also if you check in the description as well, we've just set up um, the Discord group for the YouTube Retro Repairers. Everybody is welcome. Not just YouTube Retro Repairers, everybody is welcome. All the viewers out there that enjoy that, that my content and other people's content, you know, like um, of the likes of John Beater, Matt Pixie's stuff, um, Tim Retro Corner, uh, Retro For You, if you like all that kind of gear, it's well worth dropping into that group and having a chat with us in there. There's a lot of behind the scenes stuff as well that goes on. But anyway, let's get on with the Kamikaze. Hmm, right, okay. So I've, I've stripped the Xbox down, we've got it all stripped down, we've got the DVD drive out, um, you can't see it's off camera just at the minute um so but i've set this up so you'll be able to see what's going on this is the kamikaze hack for the wim bond um light on drives the d the d4s drives some of them have an mxci chip which if you look at that picture i'm going to pop up there you can see um, that's got an o3 on the mxci chips um, so that one, you can cut a trace on the back of the board, um, you can use your probe and you can get it unlocked that way. The O5, which you can see in that picture, um, is the wind bond type, which you can't unlock them. So you have to do the kamikaze hack. And what that means is getting your drill out and drilling into the main chip. But we'll come to that bit shortly. So what I want to do first, show you how to get the details and everything off the drive so as far as i can remember and bear in mind this has been probably about whew, 13 years ago since i last did one of these drives so i'm hoping it's all going to go okay but you never know <laughs> right so i think what we need to do is get the slim key first so if we hit slim key we've got it all set up we've got his usb pro sorted out we're on version 2 which is the latest version for it the internet anymore it's just that one and it's seen as drive here so everything's hunky dory there so i'm going to hit that slim key first and let's see if we can get the details off this we don't want to send the unlock just yet so it's reading that now grabbing key sectors so it's going to flash flash around a little bit now um, it's going to get us key first and then it's going to get another file and then it's going to get another file and we have to save them into a folder so we'll just wait while that completes that right okay so it's asking us to save it so i'm going to go onto my desktop and I created a file for on desktop for it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we're in there. And we're going to save the key. And then we're going to save the inquiry file. And then we're going to save the identity. And save the serial. And we're going to, this is going to be a dummy firmware file. Do we want to auto load? the LT plus firmware. Well, hell, of course we do. So we've loaded this firmware in there. 
and it's copied his DVD drive key over. So everything's good. So you can see up there it says slim firmware, slim key extract. And you've got firmware with the LT plus three down here. That's now got us firmware. So we could actually save that file and we could put in there, I don't know, I don't know CFW and just leave it at that and we'll save it and then we've got it. Just in case as system crashes or anything like that, we've got all them files and we can just pick that if we need it. MTK flash, I think we'll need to intro the device. So we'll do that now. I just think you all have to do is switch it on and off within a second, it'll flash up um, and then it should be good to go. And I'll just do that on the power supply over here. See if that goes straight into it. We'll intro the device. So that did it, put us straight into vendor mode. So you can see serial flash 72. So we're in vendor mode, but, yeah, but the drive is locked. We can't do anything with it. We can read the firmware, so we can read that back. SPI is locked, look, aborting. So it, it can't do, it can't even read it, to be honest. I thought you could, but obviously I was wrong. Um, so we can't write, we can't read, we can't do anything because it's locked down here. So what you have to do is you will click on that and it will start going, sending unlock to it continuously and it won't stop. It will just carry on and carry on and carry on until you either exit the program or switch it all off. Yeah. So at that point, we have to do the kamikaze hack. So you might be saying, what the hell is a kamikaze hack? Well, a kamikaze hack, to do it, you have to drill it into that chip there. I'll put your picture up so you can see it better, but you're drilling into that chip there. So you can see on that picture up there that there's all them lines across it. So you can measure across the pins and, and draw a line across it, scribe a line down and around like that to be able to do it manually. Or if you can get hold of one of these, I've got an original Maximus board, which we can just simply pop on to the top of there. and we can drill straight through the X hole, right into it. So if you look on that picture again, I'll pop it up, you can see that there's a, um, a K, can't you, at the end of that. And it, the, the mark where you drill it, right at the bottom of that K, on the end of the kick at the bottom. So that's what we're gonna do. <laughs> but I have another one as well, which I'm gonna use this time. The hole's a little bit bigger, um, but this was another one and you can see the address on there. I don't know whether that company still won't go or not. They could, could be, I don't know. You can try it. Let me know in comments if you do try it and they are still won't go. It'd be interesting to know. This one's a little bit more fine and I've always had good results with the Maximus, um, or I did do back in the day. So that's what that is. We have a power cord that comes around here um, that's got a resistor in there and I built this cable a long time ago. I have measured that and it looked like about 100 So it could be 100 ohm resistor or something like that, but that comes up to this cable on here and then we get a drill a Drill bit and then we proceed and shove it in the hole and drill 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 with that round there While that's set while the jungle flasher is sending the signal across you will keep on drilling in that chip and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling until the jungle flasher gives you a beep noise. Now, I would strongly suggest when you're doing this is turn your volume up on your PC, your laptop, whatever you're using, turn it up to the maximum, make sure you can hear that sound because as soon as you hear that sound, you need to stop. If you go any further or you drill too much, you'll destroy the chip. It's as simple as that. Um, and once it does that, it should put that OX8C locked button into 0x00, which means it's unlocked. But we'll come back to that bit when we decide to write the firmware onto this drive. So I'm gonna start doing that now. 
I'm gonna try and put you onto a different angle if it'll work um, so you can see the um, microscope screen and what I'm doing at the same time if possible if not then I'm just going to give you the uh, microscopes give it the screen for you to have a look in there at what I'm doing let's get going and let's get drilling and let's get kamikaze hacking this Xbox drive so yeah sorry about the bit of a glare that you can see on there that's from my ring light um, but what I want to do is try and show you what I'm doing <laughs> if possible so I've put the Maximus on, I've held that down, it doesn't stay in place very well. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark the chip first and then I'll probably take this off once we know where we're drilling. So I'm going to do that now, I'm going to just start to drill. I'm not going to send that signal off yet, I'm just going to start drilling and see whether I can get a drill mark in it. Well that's tiny. You can't see it, but I can. I'm looking at my. I don't know whether you can see that or not. I'll try and zoom it afterwards for you to have a look at. Um, but I'm going to go a bit longer drilling this before I put that wire on. You might not be able to see much. I'm, I'm going to try and move camera now so you can see what I'm doing a bit easier. I'm hoping you can anyway, and you'll see, you'll, you'll hear the sound as well from the jungle flasher. Right, so I'm hoping you can see a little bit better now. I hope my arm doesn't get in the way neither, because I'm going to have to come over and keep drilling. So try and move this microscope up out of the way a little bit. Right, so all I'm going to do is put that loopy wire around my probe, or drill if you like. And that's going back in there. I'm going over to Jungle Flasher, you can't see it, and I'm going to click on that OX8C button and it flashes up and it says the SPI registered hardware protected. If you wish to send a status register, click now. So I've clicked. And that's sending now. So all we do now is just drill away. Try and hold that in place. Hold that in place. I don't know if you can see anything now. Am I, is my hand stopping it? Okay, I'll try it from there. Takes a long time this. Now we should be in there. That should be it now. We should be cooking with gas. So let's see if we can read it this time. Read. Ah, reading the DVD drive key. Grabbing sector data. It's probably just doing what the slim key did, to be fair. We'll just let it go through its motions. I'll, I'll skip it on a little bit. Right, I skipped ahead of that, so <laughs> we, we decided that I wasn't going to do that, so I've rebooted the laptop and got us back to here, where we was before. So we don't need to do the read, because we've already got it in the same firmware tools, haven't we? Well, we did have. Let's put the firmware back in there, then. So that's the one we created. We'll put that in there. So we've got that set up. It's all correct. Back to MTK Flash, and let's just click right so fingers crossed this uh, should write across now nice and easy well, let's see hey. yes we do so it's writing that across there now lovely jubbly So if, like I said previously, if you were putting this back into another Xbox that were going to go onto Xbox Live, you would make sure that you've locked that back down. And we don't need to. It's going in an RGH. 
but that's it. So all you would do to lock it back down again, I just showed you on a previous video, if you've not seen me do the, the D5S one, um, there's a previous video, there'll be a link at the end, you'll be able to click on that and have a look. So this looks all good at the moment, we're still in vendor mode, it's all authorised, or it's authorising and, and setting that firmware up for us. So what you would do to lock that back down again is you just click intro, switch it on and off again within that second, it should take it back into vendor mode. You click on that, um, it will lock it for you automatically, just follow the on screen, um, which is only a couple of clicks. So you just click on that, switch it on and off again, and it should be locked back down. It'll show you SPI back there again as 0C, is it 0X8C or something like that. It says, doesn't it? If I remember rightly. So that's it. So I'm going to put it all back together, get it in an Xbox, and let's see if it actually worked. What I should have done really is put the new laser in the drive first. Key point. So what I, what I started thinking, oh, it's not worked, it's not worked. And, I remember, and then it dawned on me that this drive um, had a bad laser, it wasn't reading discs or anything. So I swapped the laser out with another one. Um, that way it were only £3 on eBay, but it might as well have been nothing really, because it's knackered, it doesn't work. So be careful when you're buying them on eBay, make sure that it does say brand new. Um, so that's the one from eBay. That's the old laser. You can actually, I don't know whether you can see or not. See if I can bring it forward. Right. So you see these pots? You can measure these pots and you can tweak it down a little bit. So you can change the homes um, just down slightly, a couple of, you know, point two or something like that and then try it again so you, you when you take a, a, the homes away from it you're feeding more power to the laser to make it stronger so sometimes that can make these come back um, but I had a faff around with this one and that other one were dead anyway so I've put a brand new one in instead will it read a disc at all because I've not tested it yet I've, I've obviously I was testing it with them other lasers that didn't work that I got from eBay yeah um, and it won't work in so now I've put a brand new laser in here, um, so let's see whether it will read a disc. What have we got? Sounds like it's reading. Play game. Woohoo! Come on, picture. Spin down disc with the picture. Yes! So as long as we get that picture up there, it's all good. If it doesn't show you that picture and it shows you a step down picture, well I call that, it's a smaller picture, it hasn't read the drive right or it hasn't got the challenge responses correct inside it. Um, so let's eject that one. And let's put our Modern Warfare modded one that I showed you on the last video. And let's see if that starts up. Now listen to the disc again. Yep, reading, reading, spin up. Come on, thank you. Then it should come up with the name. Call of Duty World at War is an old game, so it only does come up with a smaller, a small icon on the screen there. But let's see, Call of Duty will start. Very noisy is that drive because there's no band inside it. It's been opened before, and the band at the back, the anti vibration band. And the, and the little fluffy thing that goes around the front of the drive, that's missing as well. There's no sound because I haven't plugged the sound in, it's just got composite out of the back. But you can see, now we're loading backups on our Kamikaze hatch drive. Yeah. 